Badly shaven chests, greasy pecs, and tons of fight scenes. No, it's not women in prison. It's those battling multi-headed monsters. It's a sword and sandal extravaganza. Tonight on USA's Real Wild Cinema. <laughs> As if you didn't know, I'm Sandra Bernhard. But here's something maybe you didn't know. I've always had this semi-crush on Hercules. I don't like it to get around. But you know the guy I'm talking about, the one with the unkempt vagabond beard and pecs of steel. In his films, he's always a perspiring peon with a fancy Rick Nelson pompadour who's hauled in front of the gorgeous queen perched atop a golden throne. She commands him to prove his manhood, and he always so eager to comply. I love role-playing, as long as I'm on top and wearing a tiara. And as always, I've cut out the boring scenes, so you get only the choicest morsels of the worst films ever made. Our first feature is 1961's Hercules in the Haunted World. My beloved Herc literally descends to Hades to win the hand of some ditched-out, saucer-eyed blonde. Where has chivalry gone? These days, I'm lucky to find someone who will schlep to the 7-Eleven to buy me a cherry slurpy super big gulp much less go all the way to hell to rescue the golden apple from Satan's tree. I hate modern romance. Thank you, Hercules. You came just in time. It is Hercules. Oh, it's Hercules himself. Ah, <laughs> 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 This is a fine way to welcome us to Icalia. It's probably a suitor of Dinara who's angry because you're marrying her. You're marrying her? Yes, Dinara's been waiting a long time. I'm determined that not even the thunderbolts of Jove will prevent our marriage. Welcome back to Icalia, Hercules. I would like to return sooner. When I learned of your easy's death, I started back right away. But the gods placed many obstacles in my path. The body of Eurytus lies peacefully in its tomb, but Dianara has not yet taken her rightful place as Queen of Akalia. Why not? Why hasn't she? Dianara was not ready to govern us. He is in the deep sea, and I must join him. Down there in the depths these many years. Dianara, what's the matter with you? Don't you recognize me? I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for a completely helpless woman. The gods have not abandoned you, Hercules. Oh, omnipotent Zeus, I entreat you. May the Sibyl speak, that I may obey. Have you the courage? 
wish to venture beyond the gates of Hades. No one has ever returned from the kingdom of the dead. Only there, in the terrible kingdom of death, can be found life for the one you love. you have been seeking, O oh mortal. You are in the garden of the Hesperides, in the dark regions of night. Our queen wishes to speak with you. Please feel you are welcome here, strangers, and give thanks to the gods who have aided you on your journey. Never until now have they allowed a mortal man to reach the desolate shores of this land of endless midnight. My greetings to the queen. I am... Yes, I already know you, Hercules of Thebes. And I know those young men as well. But why have you come for the most treasured possession of our land? The golden apple which you have in custody here will help us to enter the gates of Hades. And in Hades, I'll find a way to save Dionara's life. We want to help you in any way we can. Although you must go alone to fetch the apple. Strong he is. What is he about to do? Zeus, my father! Guide my hand if what I'm about to do is just! But you were far away and could not hear. You were far away. It's all over now. You must try to rest. I heard... I heard a strange voice calling. Oh, how horrible a dream can be. The nightmare is over and we are together again. Nothing can harm you. Hey, did you check out Herc's bulky forearms? I hate to think what he's packing under his toga. You'll have many more chances to use your imagination next when Hercules battles an angry mob to save the life and reputation of a skank. Get a skank! Get a skank! Real Wild Cinema and the Skank will be right back. Why are witches so unkempt? Check out this biddy in our next feature from 1960, The Witch's Curse. With all those rotten teeth, greasy hair, and eye wrinkles, she's like the before picture from a Mademoiselle makeover spread. Whatever happened to the women of Falcon Crest? 
This film is about a 17th century Scottish village and how it's saved from an evil curse by an Adrian's Med lookalike named Machiste. What I can never understand about any film that has a bunch of vengeful villagers in it is when they erupt in anger, how do they find their torches and pitchforks so damn quickly? Maybe you can figure it out. Here's the witch's curse. This woman with her evil magic, having had communion with the devil and other malignant spirits, has condemned many innocent victims to eternal damnation. Father God, as the fires of hell consume your soul forever, so shall this fire your body, and your ashes be henceforth scattered to the winds. Give vent to your malice and destroy me in the flesh. But remember, hate will take root in this soil, and never will it be purged, not for centuries, not for eternity. Execute the sentence! so strange. You don't expect my mistress to live in the dark, do you now? Your mistress? Yes, I drove her up here this evening in the coach. She's just married the young squire from a village. They're here on their honeymoon. But who is your mistress? It's Martha Gaunt. <gasps> stand accused of witchcraft if you wish to acquit yourself mm -hmm. place your hand on that bible i swear she's a witch there, they are now. There, they are now. there there is the tree that no one dare cut down the people believe that it harbors the spirit of the witch who persecutes them you will have to destroy it if you want to free the village of her curse and save that poor girl who is condemned to die at the stake in a few days.
but it's Batiste. Thank you. You alone have accomplished a miracle and have freed the people of this village from a terrible curse. Next stop, a crazy game that's a cross between the gong show and all-star wrestling. Anyone who doesn't fight will deserve for himself the penalty of death. Go away and I'll give you a scissor kick you'll never forget. And so will my guest Fred Williamson. Be there. Tonight we're featuring rough, tough brutes with a heart of gold. And our special guest with me now fits that bill. He's known as the Hammer, Fred Williamson, former football great, movie producer and star, who's played quite a few hunky roles of his own. Wow. What a trip. What a stone cold fantasy trip. Yeah, but you, Fred left, you left out something. You left out something. I'm also a director. I've directed about 30 of the films, too. So let's not. Well, baby, not you fill me in. That's why you're here. We want to leave a little something for you to talk about. Fine. What do you, you want to hear? I want to hear everything. I want to, I want to know where you got the nickname, The Hammer. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, terminology I got from playing professional football, trying to decapitate people, trying to take their head off. It was a blow struck perpendicular to the Earth's latitude. That's the way I used to describe it to the press. It's a rough game, but not as rough as Hollywood, honey. Uh, what do you think? Psychologically. Psychologically. It's a, it's, uh, Hollywood is a piece of cake, only because I played professional football. I mean, the first thing that I noticed when I came to Hollywood was there was no camaraderie. I mean, all these idiots running around here won't do, this, won't do their shows because the colors in the room are not right or the, the carpet is a different color, so they won't come out until that's correct. That's the first thing that happened to me when I first came here doing... Uh, but Thank you cut you. through that. You had already been on the field. I laughed at it. I laughed at it. I'm sure. I laughed at it. I thought it was great. I mean, he's <coughs> making all this money doing nothing, and you're not going to come out and work because you don't like the color of your drapes? I mean, give me a break. Who did you play for? Kansas City Chiefs, Oakland Raiders. And then you just segued. You said, I've had enough. I'm done with this. I no, can't handle um, it anymore. I wanted to be like you. I, wanted to, I didn't want to have a job. You're brilliant, honey. <laughs> I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do nine to five. I mean, I, w I tried that as an architect. I wasn't really an architect during the off-season when I was playing professional football. Really? Yeah. One night, um, I decided I just couldn't do that anymore because the wall started to close in on me. I can dig so that. So I said, uh, well, I didn't know what to do next. Uh, all the pro jocks were selling cars <laughs> or selling insurance. So one night, I was watching television, and I said, uh, wow, I think I'll do that. I was watching Diane Carroll. And she had a show called Julia. At oh, the honey, time. I love Julia. And I said, I think I'll go to Hollywood and become Dan Kill's boyfriend on the Julia show. So I did. It took me three weeks, and I became her boyfriend for two years on the Julia show. What did you just pick up the phone and say, Diane, baby, sweetheart, I'm Not in town? Not her. No, no. I came, to, went directly to the producer. And uh, <laughs> busted down the door and tried well, to decapitate him. Because I saw his name him. on the credits, so I knew who they asked for. I saw his name on the credits, so I went and asked for him, and I said, <coughs> The Hammer here is to see you. So he, he came in and he said, uh, You know, what are you doing here? I says, I want to be an actor. He says, you ever acted before? I says, yeah, I did two years of Racing in the Sun, three years of Carmen Jones in Canada. Well, I had never done anything. <laughs> so he said, okay, it's brilliant. You know, we're looking for somebody. And uh, so you just, you just walked into this town and you took it by storm, honey, and everybody was at your beck and call. Yeah, the worst thing they can say is no. I don't know about everybody in my beck and call. I don't, that's not it. I want to know I mean, wh when the women threw themselves at you more, as a football player or as an actor? As a football player. Of course. Yeah, because you, no matter how much... How many, uh, how many behinds you kiss, you can't make a football team. You can kiss a lot of behinds and be a success in Hollywood. So uh, you were always known as the thinking man's uh, badass dude. How do you feel about that? Well, what, what, I mean, what is thinking? I mean, uh, a, a guy, got a, he has a gun bigger than yours, you run. I mean, <laughs> it's nothing, it's nothing. I think, uh, I think they mean that you were, that. that you, off camera, you were more, you were taking the initiative, like you're talking about. You well, I had a plan. No, I had a plan. <laughs> when I came to Hollywood, I had a plan. I had already been exposed to usury, being a football player for so many years and having somebody make more money off of my body than me. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that always bothered me. So I said the next profession that I got into, that was never going to happen. So I had a plan. My plan was to come to Hollywood and let Hollywood make me a marketable star. Once they made me a marketable star, I was going to take that commodity away from them and become my own boss and make my own films, which I did after three years or four years in Hollywood. Wow. Fred, don't go anywhere. We're going to watch a quick clip here, an early black and white buddy pick called 
Tar the Mighty. Prisoners, our great people have bravely defeated you. However, you who are the strongest have been selected to fight one against the other. The one who succeeds in defeating his opponent will enjoy a better destiny. Anyone who doesn't fight will deserve for himself the penalty of death. His friend Umbatutu were kind of the Bob Culp and Bill Cosby of the ancient world. This clip begins with the Queen checking out Tar's package and ends with Tar and Umbatutu walking arm in arm past a huge phallic obelisk. Tar the Mighty sure had something for everyone, huh, Fred? Well, you know, <laughs> the, the strange things about these movies. This was the day of the gym jocks. You know, these are the guys that go in the gym, pump iron, never go outside. Everything from the waist up is as big as the house. Big triceps, biceps. Toros, 
and the legs were skinny. The legs look like Minnie Mouse. Yeah, you know I, I mean? know. <laughs> oh, so you still see those guys oh, at the gym. Skinny legs. I'm always torturing these my friends. They once once you start working out the legs. These now. are the gym jocks, man. You take them outside, you run them a uh, half a mile, and they f fall out. You know? They collapse. <laughs> the legs just snap. So there weren't a lot of role models for for blacks in the Hercules films. So how did you get involved? There weren't any black. I never, I never did a Hercules film. You didn't? They weren't, no. <laughs> <laughs> My characters are all like Dirty Harry. I play a cop. I play a man against society, a man alone. I don't do those kind of films. But those films are, you know, those films are very entertaining. They're very. Really, they're very good films. I like, I like all those films. You know why? Because today's action films is special effects. So you never really get into the people. Exactly. Never, you watch these films, you know the stuff is bad. I mean, you, five minutes later, the words come out. Any stories while you're doing low-budget films in the middle, you're just saying, I cannot believe I'm doing this? No, because what's low-budget to me, to some people, is no budget, you know? I mean, I can make a film for 200000 300000 700000 doesn't really matter. I mean, wh when, when you make a movie, the difference between a, 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 a high-priced movie and a medium-priced movie is the cast. Of course The cost of the film, the cost of the camera is the same. You know, so what, what the heck is a low-budget film? I, I love them all. I love all the work to do. The less money I have, the more fun and the more creative I become. But I've, I've been places in, in Italy making a film and wonder why I was, why I was doing there. I mean, uh, uh, I remember the first time I went to Italy and I made a film, an action film, and I said lines like, uh, sit down and shut up. And the Italian actor looks at me and says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I says, that's not what I said. He says, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they're counting. They is, that how they, is that how they do it when they, when they can't? That's how they did it earlier because you can't put English words in a mouth that's moving in a foreign way because the lips and the tongue and everything is moved different. But when you count, it's easy to go in and loop the oh, American language. Oh, that's a language. trap. They tell them how many, how, how many letters to go up to, you know, count to, count to nine. And on this, on this one, you count to six. So they could put the American words in after. I mean, Unbelievable. It was interesting. That's a trap. What a great time just schmoozing with you. Yeah. And catching so what up doing? on. Yeah, we're, we're schmoozing, okay. honey. That's cool. Because it's laid back, relaxed. You never got to light your cigar, though. And that's one hell of a cigar. Yeah, but I, sometimes I light it and sometimes I don't. Rarely in a movie do I light it, but sometimes I do. It's a prop, you know, because if I light it in a movie, then I break it. It, it indicates to my fans that I'm getting ready to do justice to somebody. Well, you always do. So I have no reason to do justice here, so it's unlit and unbroken. And I'm relieved, believe me. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Great. Next on Real Wild Cinema, some real good advice. Never trust a guy named Lucifer. Don't trust Lucifer. As soon as he has the crown, he'll kill all of us. Be here when I get back or I'll pulverize you. Big muscle-bound guys wearing diapers go by all different names. In the Middle East, it's Alibaba. Frankly, I wouldn't care if it was Joe Camel, because our next super stud has all the moves in 1962's Alibaba and the Sacred Crown. He used the old open sesame trick that Popeye, I think, first made famous. He then outmuscles a bunch of shirtless pansy slave boys and a couple of horses. Not a bad day's work. Here's Alibaba and the Sacred Crown. <laughs> Come back soon, my love. Heavens, how dare you strike the sacred god? What happened? Up on the mountain, there, the signal. Look, there's a man coming on horseback. Noble Alibaba, follow me to the mountains, I beg you. The wizard of Sesame wants to see you. We can't keep him waiting. I'll go with you. It has been worn by our great kings of the desert. It is a symbol of strength and the greatest power. It will be very difficult to take this treasure to Shiraz. That's why we have called you Ali. Great wizard, I will defend this crown with my life. I shall leave when you ask me to. May Allah protect you.
when at last the sacred crown is placed on my head, everyone will be forced to bow down before me. survive the second test of our as soon as you free the prisoners. You must accept my terms. First, the crown. Don't trust Mustafa. As soon as he has the crown, he'll kill all of us. You have the crown. Now let the prisoners go. <laughs> Free the prisoners, eh? And keep my promise. <laughs> the aim on this spear-throwing game next and hear the understatement of the last several centuries. I think the time has come to say goodbye, Moa. I don't want to die. More fun and games when Real Wild Cinema returns. This sword and sandal stuff is so cool. I mean, normally on the show we have all the routine sexploitation of near-naked women. Tonight we're getting the other side of the coin. Beside, I love the imaginative, elaborate, and debauched ways they've concocted to torture each other. Some very close friends of mine are going to want to know how to mail order these devices. In the meantime, we'll all just have to settle for our next film, Spear Chucking, which is a game the whole family can readily enjoy. Ha <laughs> 
Time has come to say goodbye, Moa. I don't want to die. Not like this. Kill them! This clip is a pagan ritual performed by ancient housekeepers known as the dance of the feather dusters. Enjoy. Happy to flash several hairy crotch shots. Our next Hercules hero takes on a toothy dragon named Sybil with three heads and 21 documented personalities.
Women deserve equal time, and next we'll get it. A female force that kicks butt on all impotent men. Big wave for the Wonder Women. Meanest mamas of them all. When they go on a rampage, nobody can stop them. Next, real wild cinema unleashes some very mean mamas, but they better not try cutting in on my action. You will join the real wild cinema fan club. You will be dazzled by a catalog of hundreds of uncut, uncensored, outrageous movies that we can't show on TV. Send five dollars for a membership card, catalog, and newsletter, or order the real wild cinema t-shirt for fifteen dollars plus four ninety-five shipping and handling, and get your membership for free. Send check or money order to Real Wild Cinema, PO Box six five zero seven three, CT Two, Washington nine one five five. You will join the real wild cinema fan club. Now is my favorite part of the show. It's almost over, and that means trailer time. In Seven Blows of the Dragon, check out the deadliest of weapons designed by man. Sure looks like a piece of string to me. After two years in the making at the world's largest studio, Seven Blows of the Dragon. Magnificent, deadly, and a thousand strong. Nothing can stop this martial arts army. See the deadliest weapons ever devised by man. And the ultimate weapon, man himself. In seven blows of the dragon. Are you waiting for that big break? How about some new kick? You'll get them all from the wildest bunch of far-out superheroes who ever came your way. Super Stooges versus the Wonder Women. Big wave for the Wonder Women. Meanest mamas of them all. When they go on a rampage, nobody can stop them. Nobody but the Super Stooges. It's a panorama of pandemonium as the Super Stooges fight back. See the barrage of the polar balls. See the blitzkrieg by firebombs. See the terrifying attack of the super tanks. Full speed ahead! They're people powered. Steer to your right! I can't steer to the right! I got a guy with a limp on the left! Move over, Hercules. Move over, Superman. Move over, Captain Marvel. The wildest bunch of superheroes you ever met are coming to your rescue. Don't miss the super amazing, super astounding Super Stooges versus the Wonder Women. Okay, we've reached the end of another epic episode of Real Wild Cinema. And I'm going to go unwind the same way I always do sitting in a hot tub of boiling water while pansy slaves soap me up. After a good soak, I'll be right here next time on Real Wild Cinema. Good midnight to you.